you feel like you just don't have enough. Like maybe if you just got this one other thing, like this perfect partner or this job or this doodad that you want to buy, like maybe if you had that, then life would be good. Well, you're in luck because today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to have enough. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. What's going on, Danny? What's up, Randy? Hey, Danny, how often do you feel like you need something in order to be happy? I feel like I, I, I definitely used to feel like that a lot more, and I still feel like that. I think it's natural, right? You know, we look, you know, we look at our world and we're good at being dissatisfied with it. And so then we naturally think, well, if I'm dissatisfied because this thing's missing, if I just get that thing, then I'll be satisfied, right? Mm-hmm. And the problem is, is that even when we get it, we'll be dissatisfied with something else almost immediately. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the problem is maybe for like three minutes, we'll actually be satisfied. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then after that, forget it. So anyways, today we're going to share a few quick tips for how to have enough or at least feel like you have enough. So my first one, uh, it basically, if you have food, if you have shelter and you have clothing and food clearly includes water and also oxygen because whatever but if you have those things sustenance (laughs) for all the people who are the sticklers (laughs) out there yeah if you have food if you have clothing if you have shelter you have enough like the world nowadays wants you to think that you need the next thing the brand new car the brand new cell phone the brand new this the brand new that the perfect whatever but the honest truth is If you got food, if you got clothing, if you got shelter, you got enough. The rest is just cherry on top. So take a look at your life. And if you have that, well, be grateful for it. And if you have two legs, be grateful for those too. Some people don't have them. So yeah, those are just food, clothing, shelter. If you have that, you have enough. So that's fine. You know, well, no, it's good you mentioned that though, because I think like that's one of the crazy things about the world today, though, is like we are just bombarded with advertising all the time. It's trying to convince us that we are missing something in our lives. And if we had this thing, our lives would be better, whatever it is. Right. And so I think it is really hard to feel like you have the things you need to survive or to live well in this world. And so getting down to the basics is kind of important, realizing that all you really need is to be able to survive and have the things you need to be comfortable and not die or perish. So there's this really good book called Factfulness and Bill Gates he has a quote on the front cover of the book that says it's like one of the best books he's ever read. And he reads a lot of books and, you know, he's been kind of successful in terms of accumulating money. But uh, that book, interestingly enough, if you have a car, if you have running water, a bed, a stove, and one more thing I can't remember, you're in the top 1% of the world. Yeah, it's crazy. (laughs) And that's not it's not like not a brand new car, not like bottled water, no. not anything. Like if you have those things, you're in the top one percent of the world. So it just helps to it's a good book to read and it helps put things in perspective. Well, that's a problem. Our perspective's all messed up though, because we only see like we're shown the top zero zero point zero 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 one percent, you know, rather than like looking at the world as it really is. You get a very skewed perception. That's a good one though. Um, my first one goes really well with that, which is don't let others choose for you. And what I meant by this is like, in a lot of ways, like don't let advertisers make you choose things that you don't really need. Don't let pressures, social pressures, expectations, all that make you choose. I think like one of the best ways to feel like you have enough is to live your own life and make choices yourself because then you're in control of it. And you know, you're doing what's right for you at any given moment. And so it's enough. Yeah, that's a great one, doing it for yourself. Because we're so marketed to nowadays that we end up spending money that we don't have to buy things to impress people we don't even like. And it's just like, it's a terrible thing to do. So if instead you actually live your own life, and this is something we talk about often, like finding out what's important to you, finding your values, because that's going to help you figure out what's enough for you. Because clearly it's not going to be the same for everybody. But yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, I I kept seeing this Dodge commercial for a while, and it was like Dodge Summer. It was like you know go out there and get the things to have, and it was like they just kept showing like a a truck with like two jet skis being towed behind it, then like a boat, and it's like yeah, go out and just take out like two hundred grand worth 
fun and get all this stuff so you can have fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's basically what it's telling you. Dude, I saw another commercial where it was like a young couple falling in love and then they bought a car, you know, and it was like, it's like everybody's like, yeah, I want to have that experience of falling in love. Oh, yeah, I should buy a car. That'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll help. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So anyways, uh, my next for how to have enough, and this comes from Marcus Aurelius in his meditations. He said, take a look at the things that you have that are your favorite things. And imagine if you didn't have them, how hard you would try to get them and all the effort you would put in and all the mental stress and all that stuff. And then be grateful that you have them and also recognize you can lose them. But I think that's a great one for how to have enough because if you take a look around, most people, especially as you get older, your house is probably an accumulation of things that at one point you wanted. Your life is probably an accumulation of things at one point you wanted. At one point, you wanted to marry that person. At one point, you wanted that job. <laughs> at one point, you wanted that car. So like, take a look around and figure out the things which really you like the most. Like, Granted, there's going to be stuff that you bought that you regret. I do that all the time. But there's also going to be yeah. other stuff that you really do enjoy and take a look at it and appreciate it because imagine what your life would be like without it and all the effort you would have to go through just to get it. Yeah. Marcus Aurelius, he was a pretty good egg. You know, he, <laughs> I have, I have a man crush on pretty him. Smart. Yeah. He, he, was a good, <laughs> he was a smart guy. Well, you know, you got to give him credit though. I mean, the guy was pretty humble and thought about stuff that I think most people don't even think about at all. That's the one thing about those ancient thinkers I always find interesting is that they were so so interested in how do you just live a good life and i think it's questions most people don't ask ever you know how do i actually get through this or don't reflect on these kinds of things so he's he's a good person to learn from mm -hmm. but yeah i think it's a good point too right most of these things we did one at one point and so remembering that that you would work hard for them you did stuff for them and you know if something isn't working out anymore ask yourself why what about it like went wrong and how can you change it so you can actually get back to a point where you are yeah, happy with that's it, yeah. a that's a great point. I actually did that today. I bought something that I regretted immediately, and I was unable to return it, <laughs> and it pissed me off so much because I had expectations that it would be at least like pretty good, and it was terrible, and I couldn't return it, and I was so pissed off that I spent the money, and actually writing down why I was so angry because in the end of the day, it wasn't that much money. I've lost more money doing other stuff before, but it was just like. The expectation and just having my hopes and dreams shattered. And it was recognizing that that's what happened. And that's why I was so off tilt. Yeah, isn't that funny? A lot of times it has nothing to do with the thing itself. Yeah, it's weird. Good mm -hmm. point. <laughs> my second one is uh, practice gratitude as much as you can all the time. I think we talked about this many times, you know, like do the, do the small delights each day where you, you know, write down, you know, just things that delighted you, little things. Um, but basically just trying to actively, you know, remind yourself to be grateful that you're alive. This is your one shot, <clears throat> you know, whatever it is. And there's always things to be, I think, grateful for. We just, you know, as we, we however we interpret the world, that's the world we're going to see. So if we're negative, it's going to be negative. And we have to put effort in to also make it good, too. And it can be good. I think it's just a matter of how we look at things. So gratitude is a great way to help you kind of see your life as it is and be happy for what you have. And, and it's great that you say practice gratitude because it's one of those things like meditation where you get these people all the time who are like, I can't meditate because I when I close my eyes, my mind's just going, I can't meditate. And it's like, that's not meditation. <laughs> like meditation is you yeah. sit there and you watch what comes up in your mind. But it's like the same thing with practicing gratitude. They're like, I I can't practice gratitude. There's nothing in my life to be grateful for. And it's like, that's the practice of gratitude, finding stuff to be <laughs> grateful for. <laughs> yeah, it's the effort. Yeah. yeah. And it takes practice though too, because even when you do it for a while, like there's days where it's hard. It's really hard, but you just keep doing it and you keep reinforcing it. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So my last one for how to have enough is be grateful for what you want in having already attained it. So whatever it is you want, be grateful that it's already yours and it's coming. This is something from Denzel Washington. I Denzel Washington, I heard him say it one time, where he said this is he said basically like this everything that I've gotten in my life, it's because I was grateful for already having it before it came. 
And it was like, it was like a brand new concept for me. Cause I was like, how can you be grateful before you have it? There's no way you don't know if you'll get it, like <laughs> whatever. But it's, it's crazy because I've heard it say that like the universe will give you whatever you ask for, but the only place where you can receive it is when you're in peace. And so like when you're, when you're struggling, like by might and may to get this thing done, oftentimes it doesn't happen. And then once you stop struggling, then it comes. And it's kind yeah. of the same thing with, Whatever it is you want, you can, I mean, the, the honest truth is you can do anything. You can't do everything, but you can do anything and just be grateful for it and work towards it and be grateful for it. And eventually it'll come. You know, it is true though, because, you know, whenever you put your mind to something, you know, it's going to happen. If you really commit to something, it's going to happen. So I really like that because it is, it's a good way of like, kind of like by being grateful for it, that you're going to already have it it kind of keeps you in the right mindset probably to keep going too. So it's a helpful way to kind of keep yourself moving in the right direction, focused and not getting like, you know, when you do have those moments where you think it's not, you know, it's going too slow or it's not having fast enough, it's probably helpful to kind of keep you grounded and bring you back into the moment. But yeah, once you, you know, once we have ideas that we really want something, most of us get it. It's not that impossible to do. Most of us can do anything. It's not, you know, not that difficult. I like that one. My last one. Um, for how to have enough is to focus on the journey, not the destination. We all hear this all the time, but I think, you know, and we've mentioned this before, you know, most of us live either in the past or in the future, but not the present. And the present is the journey we're on. Just like, you know, being grateful for what you already are going to, what you're going to get in the future, because if you're working towards it, you're going to get it. So just focus on actually the life that you're living now in the present and just have faith that those things will come about as you want them to. Mm. Yeah, that's a great one because, uh, you know, it's you can always handle what's happening right now. It's like yeah. the it's like <laughs> the just for today uh, thing from I think AA or one of the twelve sub programs where it's like just for today I'll deal with this day. I'll stop trying to solve all my life's problems. And it's like whatever it is, you can handle the journey. You have enough right now. Give us this daily bread, whatever it is. I don't know what I'm saying, but basically that's how you have enough. That. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you have enough yeah. is just today. Cause today you're here and that's enough, you know? So anyways, yeah. there you have it. A quick few tips for how to have enough. Also how to be enough uh, and do enough and all those other things. So this is the existential stoic podcast. You are enough. Yeah. Thank you, Danny. You're enough too. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough. <laughs> but anyway, uh, if you did enjoy the show, it helps us out greatly if you, if you could leave a review, particularly on Apple Podcasts. If you didn't like it, you know, if it, if the shoe doesn't fit, don't wear it, you know. I heard something about Cinderella's shoe, by the way, the other day, where, you know, if it was a perfectly fitting glass slipper, how did it fall off? Right? Yeah, it is a good question. Yeah, I never, I never thought of that when I was younger. But anyways, uh, also, if you have a couple minutes... We do have a survey down in the description in the show notes as to uh, we're going to create a product, most likely a book course type of thing to help you guys crush it in life. So if you could answer some questions for us, that would help us out quite a bit. Uh, this is the Existential Soak Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. I'll see you later, Danny. Later, Randy. <laughs>